right, hello and welcome. Welcome back to our channel, Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Perlongo, and of course joining me is my co-pilot, co-host, the awesome Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hi, Cassie. Um, you know what, Nora? I'm in a good mood today. I'm in a really good mood. And <laughs> I'm in a good mood too. It's sunny. Hey. It's good. <laughs> I, I love it. So with that being said, we're going into it with some more positivity and we're going to learn something new today. So Nora, what are we going to talk about for this episode? Uh, yeah, so we've so far looked at what kind of data we can get from tests um, and uh, what, how we can look at that data and what we can do with it. But now we're going to pivot a little bit more towards the science and towards what we can actually learn about what we're looking at. So what kind of planets we're looking at and what kind of stars we're looking at and how, how that information between the planets and the stars ties together. Um, so specifically, we'll look at how we can determine the size of of the planet that we're looking at mm. um, mm -hmm. and we call that the radius so the radius is um if we have a disc and we measure across that disc the radius is half of that that measurement um so i'm going to share my screen yeah. so these properties will help us determine more information about exoplanets is that correct yes yeah definitely okay um we want to know what kind of planets these are and whether we could go and live on them um yeah we're not that's gonna cool go <laughs> <laughs> um yeah all right cool yeah so we've um uh i hope you can see my screen i can yes you can um after a year of pandemic we finally figured out how to screen share apparently <laughs> um, <laughs> took us a while but we got there in the end you know <laughs> practice this before we record um, right. so, um so yeah we've talked about these transit events in the past so this is when the planet blocks out uh that light um so now we're going to talk about what that dip actually means and what we can learn from that dip. So that dip is simply, um, or the size of that dip depends on mm. the size of the planet. And it depends mm. on the fraction, or more precisely, it depends on the fraction of light that that planet blocks out from that star. So if you imagine you have this planet of this particular size here, this is an example, creating this dip, right. If you have a smaller planet orbiting around the same size star, then that dip will be smaller because the fraction of light from that star that it's blocking out uh, is smaller. So the, the dip, the transit is also smaller. Um, now, as a different kind of example, if we had the same sized planet, but a different sized star, then for the same size planet, if the star is smaller, then that dip will again be larger because it's the fraction of light that it is blocking out. Mm, okay. And we can, oh, no, I was going to say, and we see these, the dips, of course, on, on Planet Hunter's tests when people are actually marking through. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we can also look at this in terms of some equations. Um, I don't want to scare anyone off with equations, but we'll go through them really quickly. And if they don't make sense, <laughs> not the end of the world. Um, okay. We'll just have a look at them. So as I said, it's the fraction of light that is being blocked out. So what that means is we need to know that area of light that we're seeing. So that's kind of the area of the planet. So if we saw this planet, the planet is a sphere, it's, it's a ball, it's round. But if we just imagine that we when we look at it, we can just see it as a disk. So we need to know the area of, of that disk, um, which we can get from this equation here, which is pi times the radius of the planet squared. And that's that area that we get there. Now, we also need to know the area of the star, which we do in exactly the same way. Um, but this time it's the radius of the star instead of the radius of the planet, where this PL here stands for planet. Mm -hmm. Now, the transit depth, this is the depth of this of this dip over here. That's simply one divided by the other. So it's the area of the planet divided by the area of the star. And those pi's cancel out, which means we're just left with the radius of the planet divided by the radius of the star. And we square both of those. But what we're interested in is the radius of the planet. That's usually what right. I'm interested in. So we rearrange this equation and we get uh, kind of this here. And I've put a big yellow box around this because it's this the only equation that we actually need. Uh, it doesn't matter if this equation doesn't make any sense. It will already be written down in a notebook for you um, in, in a coding Python notebook. So all you have to do is change a couple of numbers. But I did want to show you what the equation is and, and how we can get to it. Um, uh, and here it is. This is a, a very important um, equation that we're, we're going to use. And mm -hmm. I would recommend actually doing this in, in a notebook. 
Okay, so this is looking very familiar. This is something that we were talking about and we were going through and you were showing me how to go through and do the coding. So now it looks like we're back in Jupyter Notebook and using that. So how would we use what uh, you just talked about previously in this? Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, as you said, this is a very familiar notebook um, and you can also download this notebook directly so you don't have to write all of this out again. Um, if this doesn't look familiar, I would recommend going back to some of the previous coding episodes. This is actually all the code that's already in this notebook was previously written in, in the last one of the Python notebooks. So do go back and, and open that. Um, I'm not going to th go through it again. I will just go to the bottom here and show you this. This should hopefully look quite familiar. So this is a yes. face folded light curve of my favorite target, take 555 <laughs> Um <laughs> One day I will tell you the story of why it's my favorite. I'm gonna hear the story at some point, yes. <laughs> I wanna know why that's your favorite, but anyway, sorry. Just the only tick ID that I know, um, no. Um, <laughs> So it's face folded, you can see the face folded and binned in black and just the face folded in, in red. Um, so the reason why we have this up again is because if we think back to that equation that we just had, we need to know the transit depth. And the transit depth is much easier to see if a light curve is face folded. You can see up this buildup of signal. It's easier to see in this black one than the red one, at least I think so. Um, yeah. And we want to know the depth of this. Um, now in my version of um, of this notebook, I can see the depth down in the bottom left-hand corner, right-hand, sorry, corner here. Uh, you might have a different version, so you might not be able to see that number there. That's nothing to worry about. You don't need to be able to see it. If you do see it, you can just read it off directly, but otherwise mm -hmm. you can kind of play around with, with getting to that number by drawing a vertical, sorry, a horizontal line across, across that figure. So you can kind of draw Horizontal, I keep saying vertical. You draw a horizontal <laughs> line across where the transit event is. And how we do that is we do plt dot x h for horizontal line. And then we can start playing around with this. So it's roughly between 998 and 999. So we'll go with 9988. And I, I previously looked at this, so I knew that this is roughly where it is. So you can see that this goes directly, almost directly, it doesn't have to be too accurate at this point, um, through the middle of those black points, which is where you want that line to be. So now we know that the transit depth is one minus this number. And the reason why it's one minus this number is because these points are at one. So the depth is one minus this, this number here. Okay. All right. And again, is that then determining what, what exactly are we determining then from that uh, with that equation? Yeah, that's a great point. So um, now that we have that number, now we know how to get to the transit depth. We can go back to that equation that we just showed just before I showed just before, and we can put that number into that equation to then get the size of the planet. Oh. So we will write that code together. So we first have to have to import some modules. So this is uh, something that will just help us with the code. Uh, so we'll do from AstroPy uh, import units as u, um, and then we'll also have to import a module called uh, NumPy. I like to call it NumPy. Other people call it NumPy, and we'll import it as MP. <laughs> I was going to say if there was a T in that, like it looks like NumPy or something like that. <laughs> Um, I was like, is that a clever pun that astronomer? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but that's hilarious. Who knew? Coding can be fun, so and funny. You should definitely be called numpy. Anyway, yeah. moving on from that, um, let's define that transit depth that we just uh, got before. So we looked it up. We know that it's roughly around uh, 0 0.9988. Um, as I said, it has to be one minus that. So we'll do one minus 0 0.9988. 8, 8, and that's that transit depth. Now, the other thing that we need is the radius of the star. So we'll do r underscore star. And you don't need to know these numbers. I don't know any stellar radii off the top of my head. But if you think back to one of the previous episodes where we looked at exofop, this is where you'd find out what that number is. So I have that up here. Um, you can go to the stellar parameters, you go to radius, and you simply copy and paste this number here. So this is what we need. Now we up here imported a module called units. And the reason why we did that is because we want to tell Python that this is in units of solar radii. So this is in, um, in well, units of the sun. So it's around 2.04 times the size of our sun. So we'll tell it that by saying times u dot r sun. And 
we will scroll down on that a little bit. Fantastic. Okay, now we have those two parameters that we need. Now that we have those two parameters, we can get the radius of the planet. And we can do yeah. that by saying r underscore planet, and we'll, it will come out in solar radii. So we're just going to keep a note of that. Solar radius equals NP, so that's for numpy. That's a module that has lots of different maths equations in it. It knows what a square root is. It knows what squaring is. Again, if these aren't words that are you're familiar or too familiar with, uh, nothing to worry about. You can just copy these equations and plug in the numbers and change them yeah. at the top here for different planets. Um, so we'll then do transit depth times r star. So that's the equation that we had before. Okay, and we will print that out. So we now have the size of this planet in solar radii, and that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know yeah. what the size of planets should be in solar radii. What we want it in is in Earth radii, because that's something yes. that's much more, we can imagine that much better. And that's why that um, this unit, the astropi unit, is so useful, because it will convert that for us. So we can say r underscore planet in Earth, Earth radii equals r, I'm going to copy and paste this, r planet dot two, and then it's u dot r earth. Oh, that's so cool. So it'll convert it directly once we go through and you, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So yes. it's 7.72 in earth radii, basically. Yes. So that is roughly what it is on XFOP as well, if I, if we did it correctly. Um, so we go to confirmed planets and we can go over here and this is in radius. So on here it's slightly smaller, but that's because we haven't modeled it correctly. We haven't refined that number too accurately, um, but it's close enough. It gives us a first estimate to tell us whether it is in the regime of being a planet or whether it's too deep um, or or just roughly what kind of, what size of planet it is. And so this is a, a good start. Oh, also very briefly, I should mention this R and the dot with a circle in it. Dot in a circle is a symbol for the sun. So that means in solar radii and a little circle with a cross in it. That's the symbol for the earth. So this is in earth radii. I'm really glad that was gonna be my next question. Like why are those two symbols so uh, different? Oh, that's really cool. So that is just a well-known uh, symbols that you would use in uh, for, you know, okay, cool. Yeah. Swarmers would use that. Oh, that's really cool. So, so is this uh, seven point? Well, we're coming up at seven point seven. We know in Exofop it's a little bit smaller than that. So, is that a good size for a potential uh, exoplanet that might be <laughs> that we're learning like quite a lot? That oh, we should actually maybe look at more with this exoplanet. What would determine whether a good size? If it's too small, probably not. If it's too big, is that something where it's like a hot Jupiter and we, maybe we don't really need to look at that? Like, what determines? what an acceptable radius or radii should be for planets yeah that's a that's a really good question um too small i wouldn't worry about it because if they're too small we won't be able to detect them um and small is always exciting so getting down to kind of earth radii so if this is one uh, that would be super exciting um and yeah. follow it up um with very large telescopes we would try to follow it up um, a bigger concern is if it's too large, because once you reach a certain radius, then it can no longer be a planet. Then it's most likely a star orbiting around the other star as opposed to a planet orbiting around, around the star that we're looking at. Um, and I would consider anything above around 20, 23, around that size, Earth radii too big. So that's roughly the size or twice the size of Jupiter. Um, Jupiter is already very large. Twice the size of Jupiter uh, is probably no longer a planet. Mm, okay. Do you have any interesting stories that you can share that's that maybe you found some things that were uh, either too big or something that you surprised you maybe when you went and did this and tried it out or I don't yeah, know, I'm throwing it on the spot. We, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's quite common that we, we look into a signal and um, and then it turns out to be too deep to be a, to be a planet and it, it can actually be quite sad. <laughs> Oh. So attached to these um or maybe not people in general i get quite attached to them and then <laughs> they often turn out to be we call them false positives um because uh. too deep or um but yeah and then and then they're they're given to the eclipsing binary working group um instead and and then they do interesting science with them so i mean they're not lost signals i shouldn't be too sad about them um cool but yeah cool okay great well 
that this is really interesting and we want to impress upon people that you know it's you're you're looking at this you're looking at the maths but don't be too scared from the maths i'm a communications major and the maths did not scare me although nora did have to reassure me several times that it's not scary um it's going through and it's finding the appropriate you know numbers and then having the coding do the work for you um and just having to play with it really and having fun and determining whether you can find the radius for an exoplanet. Um, it's cool. Is there anything else that you want to mention, Nora, that we haven't talked about? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I guess just the last thing would just be you can just use these notebooks and just like you said, you don't have to write your own code. You let the code do the work and you would just change this number here. So you get that from Exifop and you would change this here, which is the depth. Um, and of course, some of the code up at the top where you, for example, change the period, the T0 and the tick ID. And that was covered in previous episodes. That's right. All right. Well, thank you again. Have a great day wherever you're at. And we will talk to you again soon. Thank you, Nora. Thank you. Bye. Bye.